In this video, I'm going to talk about stacking layers of edge to increase our chances of a profitable trade. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So it's part three of a multi-part video series of stacking layers of edge. And we talked before about the nine or, or give an example of nine potential trading edges. Now, what I want to address now is this concept of stacking layers of edge and what do i mean by this? this is the whole kind of premise of this of this of this video series is that what i like to do is i like to stack my layers of edges so a terminology i use correct right or wrong but the idea being is that you know each of those individual things that we talked about in part two so our chart pattern support resistance whatever it may be give us a little bit of an edge if we can combine those together so stack them on top of the each other Ultimately, every time we're stacking one on top of each other, we're giving ourselves a better chance of success than trading just one. So let me explain what I mean. So if we had a chart pattern, let's say we had um, you know, some kind of good chart pattern that we were using and it worked very, very well, um, and we combine that with support and resistance. Uh, example might be at the top of my head, let's say we're trading intraday and we're trading a double bottom pattern that's happening at a prior serious level of support. Really rock solid level of support. The market's come down to it and we're getting this double bottom. It's already support and now it's giving us a chart pattern at that support. To me, that is far more powerful than if we had it just in the middle of nowhere because it's already cemented itself as a, as a really good level. Um, another example would be trading with a trend and support and resistance and a candlestick. Think of the example now. Um, if I can draw us a little shape on the board, I will try to do that for us. If we can imagine that we have an uptrend, right? And we already know that if we trade uh, with the trend, we're going to have a better chance of success than if we don't. So trading with a trend is one layer of edge. Now I want to stack another one onto it. I want to see a support and resistance level. So let's say the trend is up and now all of a sudden we come down and we give ourselves a little bit of support so we come down to some support and this support is uh, it's become support because it was a resistance before or whatever it may be we're not going to define that with you and you guys know uh, what about support and resistance the value of that is far better in my eyes than if we're trading against the trend so in other words if we're trading against the trend it was a downtrend and we we're coming down to support and the trend was heavily down it was a very aggressive bear market and all of a sudden it was coming down to some support you know, for me, the, the, I'm going against the trend. Now, a caveat out there, and one uh, astute guys of you will say, hey, hang on a second, you know, that doesn't make any sense. I'm generalizing here in terms of, hey, listen, if we have the trend on our side and we are looking to buy at support as opposed to buying at support in a bear market, we've got much higher chance of success because we've got the wind behind us, you know, market's pulling back, we find a bit of support. You know, I would much, much rather you know, kind of buy, uh, you know, a pushback to support when I know that the trend is waiting to go in my direction, then I would try and catch that falling knife, that first kind of touch markets brutally falling down to a level. Not to say it doesn't work from time to time, there's some exhaustion plays, some flush plays, but generally speaking, I'd like to do that. Okay, and if we're looking again at, at, at number two, trading with a trend, support and resistance, and a candlestick, let's say we have a candlestick pattern of a, of a wick to the downside. Okay, and that goes through support, comes straight back up, and we get that kind of reversal wick. And I've got some chart examples to show in a second. And we're at support, and the trend is in our favor. You know, we're stacking the layers of edge together and give us a much higher chance of success. Um, another thing, part three example would be the sentiment is skewed in one direction, and we have a reprice scenario. Let me give you an example. Um, a company has uh, been heavily shorted, as we can see from... Um, the percentage short float, we can see that on Finviz or US stocks, and there's some uh, UK websites out there that will give us a kind of that indication. Heavily shorted. It's been going up, but it's, you know, it's kind of stretching them a little bit. Next thing is earnings come out. The earnings are amazing, better than anyone expected. The stock has gapped up 20% and it's rallying from the open. To me, that is giving you two layers of edge. One, the price of the stock has been revalued. Yes, that might be baked into the 20% gap, admittedly, but generally speaking, it might bring in other people, other people who perceive that there's some growth coming, they've turned the corner, whatever the scenario may be, you get the idea. 
and we've got a massive amount of people who are stock short sentiment is skewed in one direction or we look at some retail um, platforms and we see sentiment is skewed in one direction meaning a lot of people are are positioned short it's gapped up it's hurting them it's unexpected to me that's double edge you know stacking the layers of edge not only is it repriced and it looks like a good buy now because it was it was really really poor before from a fundamental perspective but now we know that also know that a lot of people are stuck and will be coming out of that position. So just three kind of broad examples to, to talk about. And I'm going to dig into these a lot more with some chart examples in the next couple of videos. So stay tuned for that, guys, and I'll see you in part four. Bye bye.